Hello everyone! For this video, I created a small hovercraft that can explore planets. I ended up creating two, and I will explain how it works. I created both a character controller and a rigid body controller. As you can see, the hovercraft follows the planet's surface, and it can even jump. To achieve this, and move around the planet as if we were orbiting it, we have to manipulate two things. That's gravity and rotation. We can look at the game Super Mario Galaxy, where the entire game was built around this idea. Mario is always rotated to be upright from the surface, and gravity is at the same time acting to pull him towards the surface. Before we begin, you can download this entire project from my GitHub, linked in the description down below. I'm going to have to skip a lot of detail. Not everything will be properly explained in this video. I suggest you watch this video to get an idea of how this works, before downloading the project to explore it for yourself. This project was created in the 2020 LTS version. After cleaning up all of the old template stuff, I created a sphere to act as our planet, and our first prototype player, using the character controller. It's a basic FPS setup, the camera is attached to an empty game object called Head, which is the child of the root game object, Player. To control this player, we're going to make use of the new input system. With the input system installed, we begin by creating an action map. I'll call it Player Action Map. Our first action will be called Movement by adding a up, down, left, right composite binding. We can control our player with the keyboard. I'm now binding the movement by clicking listen while pressing the corresponding buttons. Here's a look at the code for this basic controller. To start off, we're enabling our input actions in the onEnable function. I send the vector2 of the input we created earlier to a function called move. A good rule of thumb is to always apply movement in the fixed update function while doing the math in an ordinary update function. With the input in place, we can now see our player moving, but we don't have much control over it. We need to add variables, like move speed, to our player. So I'm creating a class to store this data. I'll call it move data. I'll have this class be a scriptable object. That way we can store this data as a profile. For now, all we need is a float called move speed. And back in our controller, we now multiply our input with the new move speed variable. So now we're moving, but it's not yet orbital. To make the orbital mechanics, it all really just boils down to these two functions. First, we need a vector to the planet, so we'll call this gravity. Second, I created a function called rotate to surface. It makes sure our player always has their feet towards the ground by rotating over time. It has some issues. One of the first problems I ran into with this project is that a character controller cannot rotate. Even when I rotate the root object, the character controller always stays upright. I'll have to create two workarounds for this. The first is making a character controller into a ball, so that way its orientation doesn't matter. The second is to instead use a rigid body, which is why I'm splitting this project into a character controller as well as a rigid body controller. Both of these options will be totally viable. I'm now creating an abstract class called movement that will contain the mechanics of how we move and both of our controllers will be inheriting from this class. We now have three classes. Movement, which contains the logic for actually moving. This code is really all we need to actually move around the planet, as well as a first-person controller and a rigid body controller. The two controllers really just apply the movement differently. The planet gets its own class to store the gravitational pull, as well as any future changes. So now we're moving, our character is rotating and falling at the same time. Next we need to check that we're grounded. I'm creating a physical representation for us to see our ground collider. I'll need to add a reference to it. We'll also need a layer mask. Every frame in updates, we check that we're grounded, we fall and we rotate to the surface. We generate and check for a sphere at the location of the ground collider sphere that we made earlier. The ground collider game object is just a visual representation of the check sphere function that we are running in the code. By looking at the collider in the scene, we can visualize how we will collide with the world. We're also going to add this mouse look script that I made for the FPS controller a while back. It will read input from the mouse and allow us to rotate our camera. I'll add the input to our action map. The action type needs to be a value and the control type vector2. And we'll read from the delta pointer, not the position. A sensitivity value of 0.1 works well. Our character can now look around while wandering across the planet. But there's really not a lot to see, so let's change that. 
mainly using displacement modifiers on a sphere to create a rough surface. Now we're getting somewhere. This red ball is our rigid body controller. And here's our character controller, in first person view. The root of our player is being rotated and acted upon by gravity, while the visible mesh is what's rotated by the mouse look script. It all works, but there are still some details that we need to take care of. A float called idle gravity will apply gravity while we're still touching the ground. Depending on the situation, we'll need to change how much gravity force is applied while we are touching the ground. If we're grounded, we're using the idle gravity. Otherwise, we're using the planet's gravitational pull. A value above zero forces the controller to calculate gravity even while we're grounded. An issue I had not anticipated is that while we're rotating away from the center of the planet, we're not adjusting for the surface. A small ledge can therefore become an impassable hill if approached from the wrong direction. To combat this, we'll add another range modifier to a new float called surface rotation. We want to control how much we're rotating between the gravity and the surface that we're standing on. With this, we're adding a ray cast to our grounded method to return the normal of the surface below us. I'm now adding a second quaternion to control our rotation. The first is our rotation along gravity. This second one will rotate us away from the surface normal we just gathered through ray casting. These quaternions may look intimidating at first glance. I have now added a third and final quaternion that will be interpolated between the first two and controlled with the float we created earlier. Here we can see this effect in practice very clearly while I'm standing on even terrain. Also note that this effect is amplified by having a small planet and uneven terrain. If the planet was bigger or the surface perfectly smooth, this would not be an issue and we could have skipped this step entirely. The surface rotation value can be anywhere between 0 and 1. A value of 0 will have our character rotate entirely based on gravity, while a value of 1 will rotate entirely based on the surface below us. Our character will essentially stick to the surface like glue, much like that short Mario Galaxy clip I showed you in the beginning of this video. A value somewhere in between will smooth our movement and is perfect for what I'm trying to achieve here. We're almost done with our controllers. Next, I'd like to make your project look better. I found this beautiful skybox on the asset store and decided to use it. It won't be included in the project for you to download though, as it is not mine to distribute. As you can see, with this skybox added, the scene got quite dark. I decided I need to add some light posts to brighten things up. Just like we rotate our character, I could rotate these lights along the surface. So I created this new class called Align to Planet. The object is rotated in the update function. An important thing to note here is that this class executes in edit mode, so the object's rotation is updated every frame, even in the editor while I'm placing it. It's kind of sloppy, and after I'm done placing these, I need to make sure to either remove the script or disable it on the prefab for performance reasons. Now the planet is giving off this real creepy alien vibe, which isn't what I was going for at first. Lastly, I want to talk about this radiated class. When we're raycasting towards the surface, and we want to know the normal of whatever we hit, so that we can align our objects or our player or whatever it is, instead of using a bool called isGrounded or a vector called surface normal, we'll create this radiated class to store both of those variables. It allows us to encapsulate this data that we always need to take from array. Since it's only two variables, a boolean and a vector, it might seem unnecessary. But imagine creating an entire game from this project. You might have hundreds of objects, different classes, all raycasting to find their own alignment and doing calculations to align themselves to a planet or to different planets. We'll want to share that behavior with all those classes. Anyway, back to the controller. No game is complete without jumping, but I struggled finding an implementation that would fit both controllers. Eventually, I settled on creating a coroutine that would give me full control over the movement. It gives me control over how much force is applied and for how long that force is applied. The jump starts out strong, but during the time of this loop, it slowly decreased until it reaches zero. It turned out real satisfying. 
playing with the values, there's definitely a balance to be struck between the force and the duration. It's got a nice bouncy feel to it. That's the last piece I wanted to add. And after all was said and done, I had two different but very similar controllers. A rigid body and a character controller. And I thought I was done with this project. But off camera, I designed the little drone. And I liked it enough that I applied it to both controllers. They are now similar enough that it's hard to tell them apart. Which just really shows that they are both viable methods. But anyway, thank you so much for watching this video. Like I said before, feel free to download the entire project from my GitHub. You can find it in a link down below. I know I didn't explain most things, but this video would have been like an hour long. I'd rather give you a working sample and some ideas to play with. There's a lot that you can do to expand upon this. You can have multiple different planets and systems for switching in between them. You can add spaceships. I hope I could at least boil down some of the basic ideas into a small project. Thank you so much for watching.